was a Killa Pickering's idea to establish a Quaker colony near the California coast. He was a wealthy railroad entrepreneur who thought the people of the Wild West would benefit from Quaker values. In 1887, he traveled south from Chicago with his wife Hannah to scope out some land, and when the couple reached Southern California, they met with local Quakers T. Elwood Newland, Hervey Lindley, and Jonathan Bailey. The group toured ranch land for sale on the southwest slopes of the Puente Hills. In Pickering's own words, from the first we were favorably impressed with this beautiful situation, the high ground sloping away from the Puente Hills from which we could see the whole valley until our eyes rested upon the ocean some 18 miles away. They decided to buy the 1200 acre plot of land and at the next meeting, Elizabeth Grinnell, ornithologist, photographer, and poet, suggested the town be named for John Greenleaf Whittier. What did Whittier represent to those Quakers who voted unanimously to name the town for him? Born 1807 on a farm in Haverhill, Massachusetts, John Greenleaf Whittier was known for his abolitionist writings. As editor of several anti-slavery newspapers, he directly influenced public opinion on the matter. More than once, he attracted the attention of angry mobs who pelted him with rocks and rotten eggs and who set fire to his editorial office in Pennsylvania. On that occasion, he dressed in a wig and pretending to be one of them, rushed in to save the paper from his desk. He later wrote of the incident in the Pennsylvania Freeman. If the right of discussion upon any subject, a right made common to all by the Constitution of the United States, may be invaded with impunity, all freedom among us is abolished, and we are the slaves of the very worst of all tyrants, the mob. Whittier did not shy from describing the horrors of slavery in his poetry, nor from holding the country accountable for its hypocrisy. And he held out hope that emancipation could be accomplished without war. In his 1837 poem, Our Countrymen in Chains, he exclaims, Our fellow countrymen in chains, slaves in a land of light and law, slaves crouching on the very plains, where rolled the storm of freedom's war, up now for freedom, not in strife, like that your sterner fathers saw, the awful waste of human life, the glory and the guilt of war, but break the chain, the yoke remove, and smite to earth oppression's rod, with those mild arms of truth and love made mighty through the living God. When Whittier received a letter from the California Quakers asking permission to name the town for him, he was 80 years old, the Civil War was over, and he was a household name. He wrote back, I trust that its Quakerism will be of the old, practical kind, diligent in business and serving the Lord, not wasting its strength and vitality in spasmodic emotions, not relying on creed and dogma, but upon faithful obedience to the voice of God in the soul. So the pioneers who traveled from the east to populate the town of Whittier had a lot to live up to. They rode in on a Southern Pacific Rail Line completed that same year, 1887, and were not without reservations about the venture themselves. An account written by Annie Lee Kaufman, a pioneer from Iowa among that first group of settlers, reads in part, Aunt Edith cried at our parting. She knew that all of us would be killed by earthquakes. But their arrival was a delight to the senses. They stopped in Norwalk to switch from train to horse-drawn carriage and were greeted by Jonathan Bailey, who brought a box of luscious apricots, the first some of them had ever seen or tasted. On their way to the Pointy Hills, they stopped in what is now Santa Fe Springs to drink sulfur spring water. Before long, the townspeople had settled in and proven themselves worthy of the poet's name. A bronze monument stands at Whittier College bearing an excerpt from a letter Whittier wrote to the town. Dear town for whom the flowers are born, stars shine and happy songbirds sing. What can my evening give to morn, my winter to thy spring? A life not void of pure intent with small desert of praise or blame. The love I felt, the good I meant, I leave thee with my name. In 1987, artists Christoph Rittershausen and Tita Hupp created tributes to our town's namesake in celebration of the Whittier Centennial. 
Rittershausen's seven-foot-tall concrete statue of John Greenleaf Whittier was funded by dozens of investors who were inspired by his vision of a kindly Whittier who sits in Central Park with an open book on his lap, inviting children to come up and play. Hupp's life-size bronze statue of an 11-year-old is called the Barefoot Boy, after a poem by Whittier with the same title. He sits cheerfully in front of the Central Library in Uptown Whittier, along with a portion of the poem also in bronze. Blessings on thee, little man, barefoot boy with cheek of tan, with thy turned-up pantaloons and thy merry whistled tunes, with thy red lip, redder still, kissed by strawberries on the hill, with the sunshine on thy face, through thy torn brim's jaunty grace. From my heart I give thee joy, I was once a barefoot boy.